Hi, um, this is Professor McLaughlin. I wanted to create a video um, for you um, on Chapter 7, not answering necessarily the questions you were given, but giving you an idea where on Westlaw to look for some of the things that um, Chapter 7 asks you to look for online. So this is my um, starting page um, for Westlaw and you can get to it just by clicking that Thomson Reuters icon. So it's processing. Okay, so here is your um, query box. Remembering that uh, Westlaw is set up, or uh, understanding that Westlaw is set up in libraries, in terms of libraries, that's what they call them. But in your, um, maybe uh, another way to say it is it's set up in separate databases. Um, I don't like to use that word because when you do uh, searches on Westlaw, it is, it's one big database. I really like using the words that um, apply to uh, this piece of uh, this legal research tool. So chapter seven is all about secondary sources and Westlaw is awesome for finding cases awesome. You can just put the case in here. Brown versus Board of Ed. A zillion typos. Uh, look, it even has a drop down for secondary sources. Wow, I didn't know that was going to come up. This is perfect for a little lesson here. It has a drop down of secondary sources. And the secondary sources, uh, this first one is a law review. And chapter seven do that does ask you to look at periodicals and law reviews. This second one is, what is that? It is, um, let's click on it. Oh, I don't have access. I'm sure you all have um, experienced that at this point. So we have um, limited use, and, and everybody does. If you have full use of Westlaw, you're paying a lot of money. Most people have limited use. A lot of people restrict it to um, state law. They can restrict the libraries, which make it a little bit more affordable. Okay, so let's do a little bit of practice looking for um, law reviews. Um, this first page does have a secondary sources link. Um, let's click on it. And all the secondary sources in Westlaw are by type. So ALR, the American Law Reports, let's do some searching in there. But CLE and seminary, seminary, seminar materials, Jury instructions, awesome. We got to look in there. So CCH, what we just pulled up is, um, let's click on that. And this is um, practice specific information. Let's find something interesting, interesting to me. I hope some of you are taking my environmental law class. Um, this summer, by the way, that, that course, that uh, Legal 215, is now transferable to UC. I'm so, so grateful for some of the curriculum people at Irvine Valley College that helped me uh, accomplish that. It is kind of boring. Try all CCH environmental law. And let's click on air quality. So interesting. More searching. Uh, I didn't want to get uh, too far afield, so let's search um, healthy buildings. So it's a proposed rule 
in the Federal Register. Um, what's the date? Oh, it's out. Of, these are all out of plan. Okay, that was kind of a useless exercise. Um, I I I will tell you so much of using these databases and getting used to them is doing stuff like this. So if you're spending a lot of time on Westlaw going back and forth, uh, you're in good company. We all do, and uh, I'm going to go back. Uh, that's just uh, part of the nature of legal research, uh, is trying to see uh, where things are. Okay, so let's click secondary sources. Uh, ALR restatements, that was in chapter 7. Legal newspapers, texts and treatises, state surveys, sorry, wandering with June. These are so interesting. Surveys about what? Let's look at environmental law. plan. That breaks my heart. I'm sorry, you guys. All right, I'll stop doing that. Uh, secondary sources. Let's do something that hopefully, okay, American Law Reports. So I didn't, I didn't um, assign this, but let's do a couple from the back of Chapter 7. So if you have chapter, you can pause this and grab your book, but um, the back of Chapter 7, top of page 206, I didn't assign using ALR, but American Law Report, you read about it in Chapter 7. Let's try and find some of these answers um, using Westlaw. And always, if you get, you know, you don't want to, um, you're not trying to get ta trapped into Westlaw, using it over and over and over again. You want to, pardon me, you want to find if, if it's the database that, um, is going to be useful for you is oh lord you want to find if it's the database that's going to be useful for you um, then use it but if for your for your particular search um, you're finding stuff at another website at Law Cornell Google is giving you decent re uh, results and you're getting into another area then by all means um, do that um, Okay, so question nine at the top of um, page 206. Cite an ALR annotation dealing with liability of property owners for injury caused by failure of an elevator to level at the floor. So we're going to look for an annotation and we could search all law reports we could narrow um, property owners. It's going to be tort. Hmm. All right. Our commercial law, I guess it depends if you're suing, but let's type it in. Liability of property owners for injury caused by failure of an elevator to level at the floor. Ugh. Well, this is in the plan. That's good. At least we get some results. Um, looking at the highlighted terms, however, are we getting, oh, sure enough, liability of a property owner, failure for automatic level at the floor, liability. This is exactly it. Is this where we are at? 64 ALR 3rd, 1020. Sorry, I'm just reading. So that's not what the book has. The book has 99 ALR. I wonder if the book is out of date. So, so here, I I if you were to answer this question, you would type in 64 ALR 3rd 1020. 
me click on that and see what comes up. Okay, so this is the American Law Report on that topic. Okay, this article has been superseded by the following articles, and this is the most recent annotation, and that is the answer in the book. And the ALR looks like this, the annotated, rep the law reports looks like this. Um, duty of care, degree of care. It's very detailed. And there's an index which would take you to other helpful information. So what's good about the American Law Reports is once you get in there, you're, um, particularly because now it's all on um, Westlaw, so you're searching it. Um, if you had a case like this, if you had a client that came in, this would be where you could, uh, the LR, uh, ALR could be where you could find an article about it if you didn't know a lot about it. If you knew a lot about it, you could get the index. Um, there's a table of cases, laws and rules. And don't forget to continue to look up here. There's a history tab. Citing references with a great breakdown of secondary sources. We won't be able to get those appellate court documents. What you see is some of this out of plan. And then Table of Authorities, which I don't know, you're going to read about that later in this book, but these are all the cases relied upon to write this um, report. And then some interesting things. It's the fifth edition of ALR. It was originally published in 2002. and then back to the article. Okay, let's do another one. Remaining, oh, I don't want to be in all content. I want to be in ALR. Secondary sources. I, I hope this is useful. I hope this just isn't. Fast forward if it gets boring, <laughs> but don't skip it. Okay, question 10. What is this? Because you have Westlaw. It's for you to use. I want you to learn it. And this is something you can put on your resume. Um, so I do want you to get familiar with it. But I don't want you to get discouraged like you're not using it right. So I think it's helpful for you to see how many mistakes I make. And I've been using this. I was using it in law school. And I used Le Lexis more than I used Westlaw. But um, it is intuitive. And... Um, it's something you need to practice to get faster at. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily, it, it's its better than it used to be. I was going to say it doesn't necessarily mimic um, Google. It's better than it used to be. But it's, it's super um, intuitive. I really like it. Okay, question 10, still on chapter 7, page 206. What is the subject of the annotation found at 6 ALR 2nd? 391. What issue is discussed in section 2 of this article? Ooh, let's go to the index. No, let's go to the digest. Oh, it's uh, by name. Okay. Let's type in the Citation 6, ALR 2nd, 391. We're going to get into it, and then we're going to look for Section 2. Okay, still on the automatic elevator. And Section section 2, does it say 2A? It just said Section 2. So Section 2 in general is liability of the owner. 
So I think the answer would be liability of the owner because it's subparts and those are separate legal concepts. So you would answer, so the question was, uh, what's a section two, what issue is discussed in section two? And the answer would be liability of owner. Should we do one more? How many, how much uh, time? It's been about 15 minutes. Let's do one more. So question 11, find and cite an American Law Report annotation in ALR, oh, ALR 4th dealing with state laws that require a person who requests a jury trial in a civil case to pay costs associated. I wonder if I can get ALR 4th here. Oh, yeah, because this is ALR 2nd. Okay. Find and cite an ALR annotation in ALR 4th dealing with state laws that require a person who requests a jury trial in a civil case to pay costs associated with the jury. All right. There might be a better way to go back. I'll get one of you guys to show me how. All right, so, hmm. So, I wonder if we could use one of these. Are there civil litigation ones? And it's jury trial. Request a jury trial. So the person who requests the jury trial has to pay the costs associated with the jury. Okay. I'm going to say none of these look good to me. Jury, trial, request, costs. Uh, did I miss something? I wasn't even looking. I was typing. Let's see what it came up with. Okay. Jury, trial, request. Okay. Well, Statutes and court rules. Secondary sources. We want to look in ALR. We are in ALR. These are other secondary sources. I see. Okay. Costs. So we're searching 9,000 results. That's too much. So we want not federal. We want state. Can we narrow the search? Here we go. I'm going to click national and see what happens. And get down to 8,000. Yay! Search within results. that's going to do. State. I put state. I don't think that's going to be helpful, but let's apply it. All right, down to 100 results, but let's say, let's see what we got. Well, this looks, this looks like a good answer. Let's see what the book says. 68 yeah, that's the answer. Oh no, they so yeah, is it? Yeah, 343. So here's the citation. The answer to the question is 68 ALR 4th, 343. Um, let's open it. That's ALR 4th edition. That's an in uh, such interesting stuff in here. And there's the index. What else is down there? Table of cases, laws and rules. These are all the state cases that cover this legal issue. And then this is all the above sections. Okay, so the answer is, is this 68 
ALR fourth three four three. I'll highlight it blue. Okay, I think we'll leave it there. So I'd like to do this periodically throughout the core throughout the remainder of the class, maybe um giving you an idea how to use Westlaw to um do some of your research. <gasps> Jesus, sorry. Do some of your research, but also, um, sorry about that. Do some of your research, but also to um, help with your other courses for the remainder. You get to keep this password for um, a year. So, okay, thank you, and I'll end it there. I hope that wasn't too um, uh, painful for you. Okay, bye.